Welcome to this third in a series of eight YouTube videos focusing on the game Axis and Allies 1945. Uh, this video we're going to be focusing on Germany and its first turn and some things that uh, the German player will want to consider and some moves that they may want to make with their troops and unit purchases and things of that nature. The first two videos focused on Austria-Hungary and Russia and you'll see that the troop movements that we described in those videos have taken place and uh, the results of any battles we applied the most statistically likely results in terms of casualties removed the corresponding units and what we're left with is what you see here. Now you'll see that Austria is focusing on a, a heavy Russia offensive uh, strategy this assumes that Austria and Germany have coordinated. Um, Austria attacked Poland, uh, wiped out Russia's force there. Russia counterattacked, wiped out Austria. Now it's going to be Germany's turn. If the Central Powers did not want to focus on a Russia-heavy strategy, then this whole part of the world would uh, look very different because they wouldn't be devoting those types of forces there in Germany would end up doing something totally different uh, more than likely on its turn than what we're going to do here today. You'll also recall that Russia and the Allies are taking an Ottoman first strategy. Well, Russia's the only country that has taken a turn yet and you see it's invaded Mesopotamia and if all goes according to the Allies plan then we'll see England cause some trouble and France may get in on the action on its turn or on its second turn depending on what happens. So that's what's going on in the world. Uh, Italy, France, England, and the US, none of them have taken their turn so all of those units are still in their starting location. Now there are a few things for Germany to consider. First, it needs to, to uh, deal with the British Navy and we'll get to that with our troop movements. Now, with a Russian heavy strategy, it's going to be especially important to take out as much of the British Navy as possible because A, if England, the British player, feels as if there's nothing they can do up north, they will feel the pressure to split their resources between the North Atlantic and Persia, which is going to weaken their offensive against the Ottoman Empire. In fact, they may feel so much pressure that they decide to call off the attack on the Ottomans, which is really going to hurt Russia after it committed those forces to Mesopotamia, um, rather than committing them against the front against Germany and Austria. So that's really good for the Central Powers if we can get England to spend some or all of its resources up in the North Atlantic. It's going to help protect the Ottomans, which means they'll be able to be effective in the war against Russia and Central Powers will be able to take out Russia that much faster. We also have France to contend with. Now because we are going with a heavy Russian approach, we don't really need to force our way into France, but we, at the very least we need to form a stable front so Russia, or sorry, so France can't threaten us from the west and if possible, we want to be in a position where France is starting to feel the pressure, where Fran the French player is starting to freak out a little bit, which means they're going to apply even more pressure to England. Hey, England, help me out, help me out. So, again, England's going to be even less likely to commit more forces in India, which is going to help us in our overall strategy. So we do need to make sure we deal with the British Navy. We do need to make sure that we are in a defensive position, uh, if not uh, threatening France to cause that kind of a reaction for our larger goals. On the Eastern Front, we talked about that a little bit, we have Poland to deal with. And if we look to the South, Austria right now has Italy in a, in a, in a bind. Now Italy hasn't taken a turn, so things will look a little bit different after that. If we feel like, uh, as Germany, that Austria may need a little bit of help, maybe they took a few more casualties, 
um, than we had anticipated in northern Italy. We could shift some units down there uh, from Munich down into Venice to help them out. At this point, the way things are looking, that probably isn't going to be necessary, but that is an option uh, for us and that is something we need to be aware of and be on the lookout for to start our turn. Another thing we need to consider is Africa. Germany is the first country that actually has colonies and units down in Africa, and what do we want to do with those? There are a series of undefended territories, <clears throat> and as long as we're making use of our units, it isn't a matter of one move or another move being exceptionally better than another, but there are some moves that I think are a little bit better, and we'll get into those here in a little bit. Now with that covered, you know, here are the things that we need to watch out for. Here are the strategic goals we're trying to accomplish on this turn. What should we purchase? Now, you may have heard that Germany does not have enough infantry units. Uh, in fact, they're all used up in the initial placement in this game, and I found that to be true with my set. So what we have here, we have a fighter, because we're going to be fighting on multiple fronts, and France is a fighter, which is already on one of our fronts we have to deal with. So we need to make sure we either match or exceed the number of fighters we'll be going up against on our fronts. So we're going to get a second fighter here to help deal with that. We're going to split the rest of our production between artillery and infantry. And the stack of red chips there signifies the infantry uh, the only reason there isn't an infantry unit on top is because there aren't enough pieces. So with that said, <clears throat> let's begin. First things first. We know if we want to fulfill our strategy, we need to go after Poland. So we're going to send everything that can get to Poland into Poland. And you might see that and you might say, well, wait a second. The Russians have a ton of units there. Are we sure that's what we want to do? Yes, absolutely. The goal this turn is not to completely destroy them. We don't have enough units to do that. But we want to weaken them as much as possible for Austria to sweep in, because Austria has a mass of units there uh, to help deal with Russia. And we want to have enough units after the battle that we are still contesting it, which means, again, because we're using tournament rules, we could then shift units over here, the units we'll put down in Berlin, we can shift them over there if we need to. We're also going to shift units from Berlin and Hanover east for another attack next time. The goal is not to instantaneously defeat the entire Russian army, but this is going to be a meat grinder for them, and between Austria and Germany, uh, you'll be able to outproduce Russia, and you will be able to crush them uh, within a couple of turns, and then it's going to be a straight shot into Moscow. Now, the Russians may have a few troops they can throw forward, but once you take Poland, they have to defend a three-territory front. You just attack the weakest one of the three, and then you're next to Moscow. Now, to help us, we are also going to send our fighter in here, which automatically gives us air superiority, because the Russians do not have a fighter there. <clears throat> and for our non-combat in this area, remember combat and non-combat all take place at the same time, we're going to go ahead and prep ourselves for the next counterattack. Now, look at what we're able to send in next round versus what Russia is able to send in next round. Now they do have a handful of troops in Ukraine, but it's not much. You can see how quickly between Austria stat going in, Germany stat going in, and the availability for additional Austrian troops even the turn after that and German troops after that, where we're going to begin to overwhelm Russia over there. Now, let's head north here and deal with the British Navy. <clears throat> now what I recommend is doing a move like that over there. We do have to contend with mines, 
But consider this. We're sending five troops in. Statistically, mines are going to hit on one of them. So we might lose one ship, probably not going to lose more than that, which is still going to leave our navy more than a match for the British navy. But that's not all of our ships. We still have these over here, two submarines. If we go after that fleet, all we have to do is hit once and England loses their destroyer and their transport. Which means, with this move, assuming uh, statistically probable roles on all sides, we are likely to destroy the entire British Atlantic Navy in this round, which is going to put them in an extremely poor position. They're not going to be able to reinforce France, and if we have any navy left over, they are not going to be able to just build transports. They're going to have to build some sort of capital ship or two and transports, which takes even more production away from the Ottoman front. Now, let's look over towards Italy. We could move troops down to Triolia to help reinforce in Venice. At this point, I don't think that's going to be necessary, but that's something that we want to be on the lookout for. So now we've done our Eastern Front, we've done our sea battle, we've looked at Italy, let's look at France, the one spot up in Europe we haven't looked at yet. Now we could go after Holland or Denmark, something, some neutrals in order to get additional production. But when you consider the number of units that will immediately be popped down there, how many casualties we're likely to take, you know, at this point, maybe one or two going in, how much production the territory is worth, how long is it going to take us to make up that lost production, not really worth it for us. Now, if it's a strategic location, like maybe Switzerland at some point in the game, sure, that could be worth doing. If it's a neutral that leans one way or the other, like Belgium in this case, absolutely worth doing because the other side is going to get those units and that production anyway. But for true neutrals, if you're the central powers, you're not really interested at this point in trying to gobble that up because it's going to take too, too long to earn a decent return on that. And you're more militarily... Uh, strong early in game and you want to press that advantage not squander it on you know long-term investment the allies are always going to outproduce you no matter what um, unless you're very late in game and you're really you know owning it up on them so what are we going to do up by France we need to put the pressure on them we need them crying to England saying England England help me and how are we going to do that well of course we need to take out Belgium not only because it is historically accurate, but because it's a very strategic move in this game. We're going to pile on Belgium as much as we can there. Make it as costly as possible for France to take it back. Make sure that we get it this turn. And then we're going to move our Munich forces that we did not divert down to Italy. We're going to move them in. And then we're going to move our troops from Kiel down to Ruhr for a second attack, either to reinforce or to move forward if we need to. Now, not only does this knock Belgium out, but now we are threatening two French territories, either both Lorraine and Picardy. France can choose to defend one, in which case we attack the other. It could try and defend both of them if it wanted to. It doesn't necessarily need as much as Picker in Picardy, but if it leaves Lorraine less heavily defended, next turn we can always move our troops from Alsace west. And we can either move our troops uh, from Ruhr into Belgium, or split them between the two if we want to hold a defensive line here, or if the French have left an opening, we can continue our westward train, just make sure that we're defended in the right places so France can't break through into Germany. Now, let's talk Africa for a second, which ultimately is the least consequential 
in the short term of all these battles, but definitely something that we need to be paying attention to. Now what I would recommend is trying to consolidate our forces as much as possible. England is spread out, France is spread out, we're spread out. If we consolidate our forces, we will. it'll be easier for us to fend off enemy attacks, and it'll also be easier to make concentrated assaults uh, on enemy territories that maybe contain one infantry or two units, if we can get our guys together. So we're going to move over to Nigeria and take that without infantry. It's fine that we left the Gold Coast, or that we left Togoland open. It's going to take France two turns to get there, at the least, if they decide to move that direction, and it's only worth one production. It's far more important for us to take production and consolidate than it is for us to save one production two turns from now. Then we have our units in southwest Africa. We're going to move them up to Angola, which unfortunately uh, is a Portuguese territory, so we're not taking production away from one of our rivals. That's something else to be on the lookout for, but at least it's a production for Germany. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to move our infantry from East German Africa to the Belgian Congo. <clears throat> now, we could move our Cameroon infantry to Belgian Congo to consolidate. Right now, it can only be attacked by one infantry. I'm sorry, no, it can be attacked from two infantry. So if we do that... If you think that the Allied players are going to be paying more attention to Africa, you might want to do that because that will give you an advantage if they decide they want to try and attack you with their two infantry, their one infantry up here and the one infantry down here. If you think that they are liable to forget about Africa and not really pay attention to it, you could try and score an extra production by moving there. In this game, we're assuming that the Allies are reasonably competent and that they're going to be paying attention to the entire board. And on the Allies' turn, we're assuming that about the Central Powers. So for my move, I'm going to recommend that we do that. So we've dealt with Africa. we started consolidating our forces together. We've taken some production. We have begun threatening France. We, well, we've taken Belgium, or well, we're threatening France right now. <clears throat> we've made a major push against Poland which is furthering our strategy over here, and we have decimated, not literally, but figuratively decimated, destroyed the British Navy, which is going to slow them down up there and make it more likely that they'll devote resources there, which is going to mean that the Russian attack on Mesopotamia will likely falter, there will be fewer reinforcements coming in this way to attack the Ottomans, and less of a British presence over here in India to eventually sweep up and help stabilize Russia as we push forward in the next couple of turns. So right now, we're in a very uh, strong position for the Central Powers. Now we're going to have France and England go next, and that will begin to change the way things look. Um, but this is what I would recommend for an opening turn as Germany, assuming that uh, Aust you've had that agreement with Austria, you know, Russian first strategy, uh, and, that's, and things look good in Italy. This is what I think is a very strong move. So, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, uh, questions, recommendations, and so forth, please be sure to leave them in the comments section. Uh, this video is about helping all of us get better at this game, uh, both you and I. So I'd appreciate any feedback that you guys have, and I hope you'll tune in for my next video as well.